Hello, hello, this is Lucy Woods and Strategic Change Guide Podcast. Today we do have a very interesting subject. We are talking about diversity, diversity in team. What does it mean to you personally? How you need to deal with it? Should you pay some extra attention? So what is it today? Why this word that commonly used? And so what you can do about it? I'm not alone here today. I do have here next to me my husband and my business partner and really global leading professional in diversity and inclusion, conducting trainings globally, uh, Jim Woods, and he will be telling you about this exactly subject. Say a word, Jim. Hey, thank you very much, Lucy. That's a great having you here. We didn't record podcast together before. This is kind of spoiler for our audience. So let's talk about diversity. Please tell from your experience, what is it and one the one should be concerned about the subject? Well, it's an interesting word because uh, fundamentally people, be t- people are turned off often by the word diversity itself, because generally, despite what they read or what they hear, they think only in terms of color, in terms of race, uh, meaning racial diversity, and rather than seeing the entire benefits of diversity and that we all exist in it somehow. Uh, for ex- One of the examples might be, uh, let's say, for example, if you were a consumer or if you had a home-based business or if you are someone who hoping to strike out by yourself, why should diversity matter to you? Well, A, uh, diversity is enriching your opportunities by having a whole host of different ideas that are vast. Rather than thinking in terms of one way, now you're thinking in terms of multiple ways. And that's diverse thinking, which is why diversity is like that. Diversity is also wanting to have people that are suppliers, people that are working with you. You don't want to have just one group. It doesn't matter if there are multiple people, but only one way of seeing things without innovating, having different options, different viewpoints. That's now having diversity. When you go out in the morning going to work, you want to go out and have, meet different people for your organization. But even deep meeting, meeting different people for your own framework, that's diversity as well. So I would tell people sometimes who want to have, who have the same types of friends that they've had for years, the same makeup. It may be the same friends in a racial group, uh, the same demographics, the same uh, financial terms, you might say, or the same neighborhood, the same country club, the same gym. No, branch out and do something entirely different because now that diversity in thinking, that diversity in people and all is going to help you see, have ideas that would be uh, considerably different than what your competitor may see it now, and you're going to develop new products that come to your mind in a flash of thinking. You have more uh, inspiration, more motivational ideas now because you're opening yourself up to a myriad options. This is great, and being different is really great. Trying different things, meeting different people, trying different perspectives to things, and even trying to understand your day and your routine from different angles different point of views, it's a cool thing, it's kind of cool exercise that you can do daily uh, just to find other ways and sometimes looking for other ways and diff- looking at things differently, it gives you something that helps you succeed later, to help you build a better strategy for your career, for your business, so it is a good thing, being diverse, being different is cool. But let's talk about diversity in teams. There are two perspectives and two ways to understand it. Today we have this uh, all this conversation about customer-centric business, when every business should be, it's not yet, but it should be centered around the customer, understanding target customer, understanding customer needs. But not just that, building relationship with customer, being friendly and building the loyal customer community in a way that no, none of your competitors do. This is the way uh, to win the customer and to increase your profits. But that's not it. So diversity now working in the teams inside the company and outside because in any business you deal with customer and uh, the group of customers you're dealing with, they are diverse. And the team inside your company should be diverse too. So how does it work in a team, Jim? 
Well, we're going to look at this obliquely because what happens is that if we were to go take a step back and not just think in terms of customer service and working in teams and the service we offer, people forget about the employee. The employee is first. So it means the employee is first now. So how do you hire those people that are going to have a real um, caring, a real empathy for what the customer wants when they call in? How they're going to call, how they're going to handle those people when they never call in for that matter. Because most of them never do. Well, now we're taking it back even further to human resources, uh, along with hiring the manager of the teams and organizing the teams. Because diversity, how we have our own personal hangups, uh, they determine the type of people that we hire as managers for the teams, how we hire the employees for that matter. And so if we, if you, if we wipe away some of the biases that we have, because now we're going back to look at our own personal biases. Uh, companies will typically, even recruiters will hire people only from certain schools and they may hire people who may have a difference of opinions about politics. They may want to combine teams where people who have only, uh, people are comfortable with groupthink, meaning they only want to have a consensus building and they, they never really want to stand up and say, well, I, how about we try this? Well, I believe this would be the best interest of the customer. No, sometimes we only want people in organizations that have this homogenous thinking of a, of a, where they want to have unity and they want to have this they're so comfortable only in bowing to pressure that they won't have a diverse opinion. So what, we, what do we do? We put a team that looks and feels alike like every other team. We hire people that have been, that are in the body or the image of the owner of the organization or the owner of the team leader. Uh, the team leader goes in and look for people that are quiet, people that are passive, rather than people that are gonna, going to buck the system or uproot the casual thinking or something that might have been pervasive. And we want all those people, but we don't want those people. They're comfortable for us to have them. They're easy to manage, and they don't. that's not leadership. They're just people that are just there who want to build a consensus because they're afraid of, A, losing their job. They're, they think that it's their job to just kind of get along, go with emotions. Uh, that you don't want those people because they're never going to give you the real innovative, the real striking thinking that you want to to uproot things that have been done the same old way. One of the phrases one of my friends once used is that uh, people in teams or their managers, especially even the HR person to help do the hiring for them, is that one, uh, they use the adage of this is the way we've always done things around here. And the second one is my way or the highway. And that, that type of thinking influences people never to come up and tell in a team how they really feel about a certain situation. And that's where diversity comes in. Because they, you need to have someone in there who has a mix and they can't wait to have people fight for their ideas. Fight for their way of thinking rather than saying, well, oh, I kind of get along with that. Yeah, it works okay. Uh -huh. You have any new ideas, John? No, I can agree with that. You don't want that. You want a new framework. You want people who will fight and who will say, I disagree. What if we, you want them to agree on the mission, but you want them to fight for new ideas, new way of doing things because it's in them. They're afraid to let it expose themselves. They're, they're afraid to let it come out and say how I really feel passionately about something. That's exciting. But before we go to the teamwork and leadership discussion, let's go back to the diversity and the process. So as you mentioned, the word diversity in many brains understood is uh, to differ differentiate people by race or nationality. It often happens even now. With all this globalization, all the technology we have is still happening. And I've seen the failures in organization when uh, the customer service team is trying to be hired for the uh, diverse uh, with people who are uh, customer centric, who are friendly, smiling, all this stuff, HR, HR team doing their best. But 
in fact, in a week or two, you realizing or just finding out accidentally that those operator, operators, customer service operators, online service, discussing customer and kind of differentiate customer by race or nationality. That will be a huge surprise because you did all the job, tried to find the right people, and obviously you failed and the process has its flaws. So what should and what can the manager, supervisor, or business owner do to prevent from this to happening? Well, let's say you've done everything right and uh, hiring a diverse class of people. Make, let's say, for example, you already explained to them how their opinion is right. I mean, opinion is important and no one is uh, maligned for having a different set of opinions and wanting to fight for those things. Let's say all that is running perfectly. Well, now uh, I've seen I've worked with a host of uh, customer service organizations. I've seen and heard managers berate uh, customers uh, uh, to the employees. Yes, that was a stupid question the customer asked. Why did they bother to call in? Why they why couldn't they go to the uh, how-to page or the frequently asked questions page and figure this out for themselves? Uh, it, employees take that bag during their lunch break, and it becomes something that's imbued in their uh, becomes inherent in their their thinking because they've seen that okay. The customers now are calling just to harass us when they can solve the problem themselves. Rather than stepping back saying, when it, by the time a customer calls us, they must really be incensed. They must be upset. They, I'm sure the customer's already gone like many of us have to this page and try to figure out how to do it. And, the, and what's easy for one person is going to be difficult for another person. It doesn't mean the customer is just trying to waste their time by calling. Just imagine how much time it takes up for them to call to begin with and to stay on hold out of their busy day. So now put yourself in the customer's um, in the customer's position and say, wait a minute, now how can I make this easier on that customer because this is not going to represent just one person calling in. That's a host of other people that may have the same problem whom we never hear from. So now how can we make it easier on them to get their job so they want to come back and do business with us? And one of the ways to do that is to listen uh, empathetically, emphatically. So treating the customers if you're in their position and what you want to have learned and how you want them to be valued and appreciated. I had an issue with my credit card once, uh, and it's kind of interesting. I call countless times about getting the issue done. After a number of weeks with the credit card, now getting the new card sent to us, one that was lost and promises made. You, I assure you, Mr. Woods, this is going to be done. I am the one that's going to step up and take care of it. Nothing was resolved. They sent me the manager. They sent me the cut, sent me to the customer service reps, and no one got anything accomplished until one day I sent an email from LinkedIn to a president or vice president of the organization. Then they got me to the right person because now I had to elevate my concern, and now I reached someone who wasn't even a manager. They sent me someone that was going to take care of this situation. They said, Mr. Woods, you should never have to deal with this. Now they put themselves in my situation. We apologize for the inconvenience, but I assure you right now, you have the right person, and I'm going to take care of this in this one phone call. Now, that impressed me. And you know what? Despite everybody else telling me that, this one person did it, and it was like manna from heaven. When they did that for me, I was enthralled. And you think, guess what I did? I couldn't wait for everybody on, on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, everywhere to know what this one person did for me. That's what you want. I've seen the same. I had the same situation when one person in a team, and not necessarily it will be supervisor or the boss or the team lead or something. Sometimes it's just one operator, the one person who cares that able to solve the problem or just able to address that issue to supervisor to make that problem disappear. So it does happen, and here we come to the term uh, leading by example. Mm -hmm. And surprisingly... Today, it's not just about finding the right manager. It is more about managing your team in a way when every person will be hurt. So how, how it works now, it's quite new. After we had all those vertical management systems and all this hearing and all this corporate stuff, we do have more friendly environment in office 
usually with modern organizations. So, so how does it work? Leading by example and make the team work in a way when everyone could be heard and anyone could lead others by example. Well, we have what we call the flavor of the month or the flavor of the week in organizations. We have an HR and this, uh, we have them throughout the organization where there's a new buzzword for everything. IBM had a wonderful video series that you can find in Google called Buzzword Bingo. And the buzzword bingo is they take all these fancy words, benchmarking or uh, you just name it that we've all heard before. And they're just words that are somehow attributed to a new theory, a new fad, and that everybody's using. They're going to do all this now. It's, and what they've done is they overcomplicated business. I mean, yes, business is more complicated in some respects because everything moves at the speed of thought now. But business isn't as complicated because we have more management meetings, seminars, books, MBAs, all these things than ever in history. And yet, if fundamentally, we have the same problems every single day. And they don't seem to get handled any better. And what people can do right now is get away with all the fads and all the theories that everybody keeps coming up with every day trying to make them work and just get back to something really simple. Listening to people, anticipating the outcomes, making people feel important, uh, leading them as opposed to managing them, but not thinking that you have to be in, be part of every situation that comes up because you hired people who you felt were going to be responsible, be accountable, and people who were going to be innovative in their thinking and all. Trust these people to make the right decisions, hire them for their attitude, teach them the right skills, hold them accountable, don't berate them, and speak to them and listen to them. And you'd be amazed at what they will come up with. That's amazing, and it's all about diversity. So today we are talking about diversity and what it means to you. So to you personally, try different things, different perspectives, and different way to do and to understand things. And for the business you are working in, or you are managing, or trying to build, just remember that your customers are diverse. They are all different. And nowadays, when we are working, working online with all those countries and all these people, it is very important to remember about diversity and when it comes to your team it is diverse too and it's there are ways to manage it correctly and we will talk about it more in other episodes this is it for today we are expecting your questions to our email just email it to lucy at woodscavalovergroup.com this was jim and lucy woods and strategic change guide podcast stay with us and follow us today don't forget to click that button thank you very much for having me lucy Thank you. Bye.